Good morning, you guys. It's a uh, beautiful sunny day. It's warming up, but uh, the last two nights we had light freezes, and so there's some changes to document. Um, I'm also going to make a video to just hang out with the chickens for a little bit because uh, that was requested. So I have a little maximum minimum thermometer that I got last winter, and um, it recorded down to 28. It got chilly out here, and I think it's. Um, I'm just so amazed with how how resilient things are. So here's you know some tomato plants that um, had a nice thick frost cloth on them, and um, you know they got a little tip damage, but still going to get some tomatoes forming and um, other new things. We've got some awesome scoring of uh, political signs. But here's a new cabbage patch. Um, just turned over this uh, area, ripped everything out with a, a friend of mine. And um, so here's another tomato plant that uh, just with the frost cloth on top. So preserved a lot of the tomatoes. Hey ladies, let's make a video with you guys. Back, back. So yeah, it's chicken time. So I've got this cabbage. That's first order of business. Actually, they've still got cabbage from the other day. Well, this is, um, I don't know. This is their treat. You can see it's just a, a spike in case you want to make your own, the cabbage spike. Let me have a seat and we'll get some chickens for you guys. All right, it's a sunny day, so there's a lot of shadows, but uh, I'm doing my best. I got a little shady corner here. Um, no, no. So I, I have some treats to, to bring them up for you. Daisy here, this is a speckled Sussex. And, um, She's very uh, food confident, coming down, um, but I want to show you guys Scarlet, so give me one second. Alright, so here's Scarlet, so you can see how much she's grown. Um, what actually, the thoughts I'm having right now is like, I don't have the same connection with this new flock that I had with my old flock. It is um, it's making me miss them a little bit. Hi. But, um, but they're getting big fast, and um, as always, the opportunity for connection is there. Um, there's also that, what you just saw down there, like the, the pecking order, you know, challenge is there. It's, it's nothing like, you know, one flock from the very beginning. But um, Scarlet is still a gentle soul, and um, she's definitely not one to like jump into laps like some of the others are. But the birds are doing well, they're, they're growing fast, and, um, hey, um, hey, McCannia. So McCannia's the big bully, right? I told you that. Um, you see Scarlet, Scarlet won't eat anything while she's here. Daisy would. But it, what it makes me think of, so like the feelings I was just feeling, of uh, kind of like a loss of connection, like with the old birds. It comes from not being able to have a strong connection with so many birds at once. So it's like, it's just such a great lesson for relationships. Like that's what we need and, and to see is that, you know, they, their relationships being strong is really important. And that when we're spread too thin, you know, the relationships are just different. It's not like it's worse with this new flock, but it's just, it's different. I don't have the same, I don't have the same connection with them. That said, I probably will spend some energy, once things slow down for winter, trying to train a little bit of, um, you saw that? Um, train, train a few tricks into them. Um, we still have uh, connection enough for those opportunities. Hey, you guys. I hardly ever do this. This is like, uh, the big blackbirds never get it lap time. So she's gonna jump. Yeah, Oh, Come on, Phantom. So yeah, it's not all, uh, it's not always the cool stuff you see on the video. I don't have, uh, I don't have a perfect relationship with my birds. But, um, 
I still love them. It's a beautiful day. They probably need to get outside. So let's go uh, take them out and watch them explore a little bit. Come on. Off into the forest. They are jungle fowl. They like that kind of cover. So that's their day. Um, they're going to be out there finding all those goodies and then when it's time they'll come back in on their own. So let me show you a few more things of what the freeze did here. North Houston 28, you know, definitely a freeze but very, very light, short duration. Um, so we got papaya that looked like this, you know, toasted, you know, starting basically undamaged fruit. Um, I was, you know, um, just protecting the trunks. Here's another toasted moringa toasted. So don't you uh, uh, dismiss your moringa just because it got frozen. The food value is still there. It's just like freeze dried. So I'm ready to pull down some leaves today because they're, they're pre-dried. How cool is that? But this was kind of amazing here for uh, getting to 28 in the area. This lemon drop pepper is um, partial damage on fruit. You see a little glossiness. Leaves are okay. Huge microclimate right here. You can feel the leaves of the falsa had protected it. Um, you know, damage uh, superficial, not you know really hard, but um, there's some damage on the giant passion. There's damage on the falsa. You can see it in the coloring. Um, here's more big papaya loaded with fruit. <laughs> It's a lot to detach from, you know, the uh, change of the seasons here, since I grow so many tropicals, you know, this is what freeze damage does, it shoots the sap out, but this trunk is fine and uh, gonna, you know, bring in a lot of material to protect it for the winter. So over here on this side, you can see bananas got, you know, you know toasted a little bit, the uh, solanum got you know, toasted. I'm starting to put out water buckets covering things. Um, curcuma is starting to go down for the winter. I um, thought this was pretty cool. So completely uncovered, no sheets, no nothing. Um, this is Cherimoya with only a little curl right there on that leaf. Not much, hardly any damage. Um, over there you can see the, um, the loof is done and that's normal. I threw a sheet on top of these cat leg guava and uh, Got a little leaf damage. This star fruit completely uncovered, looks undamaged. Uh, it could be hiding it. Um, you know, see the banana, that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's a uh, winged yam freezing out the top. You know, just a gradual transition. But the main one I came over to this side to show you guys is the star fruit. So I did cover it. Um, I had a little canvas tarp down there, and it looks beautiful maybe a little <laughs> bent over and so um, yeah if I get uh, another month or two before the next freeze I'll have some more star fruit I've actually already gotten a couple off got to share but um, this is exciting for me because it's my first crop so hopefully you can wish for me and say winter hold off a little bit let some fruit ripen and um, on this tree all right, you guys, that's the gist of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch y'all next time. Peace.